Hey there, Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies. Today's video is about a puttering session I did with a music conductor. So this, um, he, or composer rather, he uh, composed music for films and a lot of uh, nature films was, was his, his specialty. He tended to like a more spacious style in his composing and more silence, more room for that. And he was in a place where he was looking to take a leap to the next level in his composing. And it was strange, I've never worked with a music composer. And he said, do you think you could help me? I said, well, let's talk and we'll, we'll find out. And a few things struck me. One was his interest in a, a different kind of composing, more silence, more spacious, not the staccato, bah, 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 uh, which tends to be so common, he was saying. Um, number two was that he had a very mystical, sacred, spiritual relationship to nature, not a mechanical, mechanistic one, not a sort of science-based wonky, we have to preserve ecosystems for the services they provide and carbon. That's not his relationship to it. And he's become concerned that that's the way we're starting to look at nature. And that's what a lot of these films do. Um, and so he was interested in doing more of this kind of work, but scared that he would be brushed off. If somebody was just, you know, that's that's um, woo woo, not of interest. And that maybe he would lose clients if he started to talk about it. And so he kind of kept these worlds separate. He'd also started a business with photography, uh, doing landscape photography, where maybe more of this mystical shows up, but he'd kept the, the mystical and his work separate. Uh, until this call, you know, where he was reconsidering it as we spoke. Just looking at my notes here. Um, so he'd won a lot of awards for the landscape photography. He was very good at it, and he felt like there was a, a kinship between the the composing of music, you know, more with the ears and, the, and this landscape photography with the eyes. He felt that they fed each other, that they had a kinship to each other, but he never talked about the photography, you know, with with the uh, composing work, it felt like two different lives, two different businesses. And so there's this question of, um, should I keep them separate? And on some levels, yes, it makes sense to keep them separate. They're different things. But on another level, I said, when you're doing the composing work, when you're looking for gigs or doing the write-ups about your business, I would be tempted to, and suggest really to make the case for the connection between these two, the landscape photography and the music. If you think there's a connection, tell us what it is. Make the case that uh, there's something about your eye for nature that's gonna help you with the composing of the music. You know, if you can't fix it, feature it. If it's just a part of who you are, I'd, rather, I'd be inclined not to hide it, but to share it. Um, the other thing I'd suggested to him was to personally reach out to people I say, you must have so many people you could reach out to and say, look, this is the kind of work I want to do. I want to work more on these kinds of films that have this sort of ethos and point of view and pacing to them. And uh, do you know anyone? Do you know of any gigs? This could be a group email, but there's probably a lot of individual emails he could share. Uh, he could, he could, people he could reach out to and email individually. Um, and just to start, I said, you know, just start conversations. And this is something I would urge everyone to do. If you've got a new thing you're thinking about doing, don't try to just make it happen. Just start a lot of conversations about it. Because you never know what can come from those conversations. You talk to one person, they say, oh, you need to talk to this person. And then you talk to that person, and they say, oh, no, who you really need to talk to is this. It often needs to go that way. But if you don't start the conversations, you know, you never get here. You're sitting here brooding on your idea, but if you just talk to this person, well, this person isn't the one you might really need to talk to, but the way you're going to find them is not by brooding and thinking, how do I find this person? No, just talk to who you know. They'll tell you to talk to somebody, talk to somebody, talk to somebody, and boom, you're there in a few steps. So I was really encouraging him to do that. And um, overall, just to make a case for his perspective, for what he sees as needed, this is so much of where niching comes from. You know, Anisha is what we see is needed, what we see is missing. So I, I encourage them, speak to this. You've seen so many of these films. What is it that you see is missing in these films about nature? 
you know, what are the tired tropes of nature films? What are the things that you see played out over and over again that you would like to see something different? Because sometimes people just stick with what works, of course. Oh, that well, everyone knows that a cute baby panda bear, whew, that's a winner. So we always have that in the movies or whatever it is. And maybe he sees there's another way. We don't have to do it the same old way. It can have more impact. And I bet you there would be people who are who are interested in this. So there you go. Those are uh, those are my thoughts from that case study. Hopefully that gives you some ideas, something of use in there for you. Um, but the big takeaway, I would say, start conversations, start talking to people. If you've got some new outrageous ideas, something you see is missing, just start talking to people. Do you see this as missing too? Do you know anyone else who sees this as missing? Anyone I could talk to? Do you have any ideas, any advice, any guidance? Ten conversations could completely change the course of your life. One conversation could change the course of your life too. So there you go. That's it. Thank you so much. If you're interested in my work and exploring more, go to marketingforhippies.com. There's a ton of free stuff there to check out. You can also follow me on Instagram uh, at Marketing for Hippies and on Facebook as well. Thanks so much, and thanks to everyone who subscribed and is liking and sharing these videos. Very, very grateful.